Hello everybody, my name is Giulia Boccacci. I'm a master's student in science and technology for the conservation of cultural heritage at Sapienza University of Rome. I'm going to talk about the work conducted with the supervision of Dr. Francesca Frasca, Professor Chiara Bertolin and Professor Anna Maria Siani. This contribution is entitled Acoustic Emission Monitoring Along Grain Direction in High-Low Tree Rings Density of Scott Spine, a Literature Review. The current work aims to present a systematic literature review of the state of the art of the use of acoustic emission non-destructive technique to monitor micro and macro fracture events occur the long grain direction in Scott's Pine. In this research, the use of the acoustic emission technique has been related to both the high low density of tree rings and the grain direction of Scott's Pine and more generally softwood. The systematic literature review was performed using a three steps process defined by the Prisma chart, which includes a first step consisting in the identification of the documents of interest identified via the search engines Scopus, Google Scholar and Web of Science, based both on temporal and thematic criteria. The research, in fact, was limited to the documents published in the period January 2000, June 2021, and to the publications matching five different keyword combinations. The second step was the screening of the documents based on the reading of the abstract, in the case of journal articles, or based on the reading of the brief introduction, in the case of other kind of documents. At this point, the documents in English, as well as those available online, have been included in the review, obtaining in this way a list of candidate papers. The last step was the included step based on the reading of the full text and leading to the selection of the final documents to be considered in the review. Here, in the central column, there are the five combinations of keywords used in the query search approach. Due to the complete overlapping of the results obtained by Web of Science and Scopus, these are here and after named only as Scopus. Each combination gave a different number of results according to the three different steps already described in the previous slide. The final number of documents obtained by means of this research is 18 documents from Scopus and 13 documents from Google Scholar for a total of 31 documents, most of which are articles from peer-reviewed journals. All the documents analyzed in this review were identified with an ID number. In this Venn diagram, we can see that the two sources, Scopus and Google Scholar, often produce the same results. Inside the intersection between the two circles, there are the documents found both in Scopus and in Scholar. Starting from the reading of the selected articles, a first approach was to create a personal database reporting all the relevant characteristics deduced from the documents. This analysis highlighted that 27 of 31 documents explored Softwood's behavior, while 10 of them explored Hardwood's behavior, and just one of them considered wood products, such as play wood or particle board. The documents describe the use of the acoustic emission technique to investigate the topic, in most cases through laboratory experiments, and in only one case through in situ monitoring. The tests performed on the samples often involved a climatic control on them, for example inside a climate chamber for a certain period or simply moistening the samples. The tests were of various types, mainly fracture tests, but also tensile, cutting, coating, compressive, drying, and torsional tests. Among them, 12 documents had both an experimental and theoretical approach, performing also numerical modeling or simulation, and in some cases suggesting mathematical formulations. The instrumentation applied was different. 
Except for the acoustic emission that was part of all the keyword combinations, the testing machine was used very often to perform the different types of tests already described. Digital image correlation was often used to record images during the tests. Climate chamber and laboratory chamber dryer were used in the cases of climatic control on the samples, and other techniques listed in the slides were used less frequently. Here, the geographical distribution of the documents was defined by considering the country of the first order's affiliation. Most of the studies are performed by researchers mainly from Europe, especially from Poland, Norway, Austria and France, but also from Asia, so Japan and China, and from North America, USA and Canada, and South America. The results show that the topic is especially investigated in those countries in which pine wood is more widespread in nature and more used as building constructions materials. This figure shows the number of publications by year after the refined diversified by three different lines. Orange for the total number of documents, blue solid line for Google Scholar and blue dashed line for Scopus. The graph highlights the interest of the scientific community on this specific topic with an increased number of publications in 2020. The diagram on the left refers to the expertise and cultural background of both the first and the last orders of the documents. The results derived from Scopus show that the authors are mainly involved in engineering studies, then in material sciences studies, then agricultural and biological sciences, earth and planetary sciences and other disciplines including chemistry, computer science, art and humanities, physics and astronomy, energy and environmental science. This slide shows the main journals in which this type of research has been published and their related subject areas. The table on the right was based on the information obtained from the journal rank indicator Shimago. It reports the journal's name, the corresponding subject areas and the journal quartile. The conference publications, as well as the chapters of books, were not considered in this diagram. Moreover, for one journal there were not any detailed information available, so for this reason only 25 documents instead of 31 were included in this graph. The main macro areas are material sciences that reach a major percentage and for which the most prominent journals according to the journal quartile are construction and building materials and material sciences and engineering. The engineering subject area reached the 24% and the most prominent journals are Construction and Building Materials, Journal of Material Science, Material Science and Engineering, Wood Science and Technology. For the forestry subject, which has reached only 18%, these are Forests and Wood Science and Technology. For physics, that reached only the 8%, the most prominent journals are Material Science and Engineering and Physical Review Letters. The others category comprehends subjects such as Waste Management and Disposal, Agronomy and Crop Sciences, Biotechnology, Nanosciences and Nanotechnology, Plant Sciences and Metals and Alloys. We found that the most monitored acoustic emission parameters are amplitude, energy and counts that are frequently studied against time at different temporal resolution, against crack length and also as a function of load, even sometimes in their cumulative form. The analysis of the acoustic emission parameters distribution shown on the top of this slide is an example of investigation done by Bertolin et al. in 2020, through which was possible to distinguish between the ductile and brittle life fracture in Scotspine and Oak samples. Among the parameters less frequently studied, there are the frequency characteristics. The frequency domain, in fact, is less frequently explored than the time domain. 
These are peak of frequency, center of gravity, and the frequency signals as a function of time. Other parameters, uh, uh, such as energy release rate, fracture bonus, root mean square of the signal voltage, and density surface energy value, have been investigated less frequently, but have been proved to be useful for a better understanding of propagation characteristics of acoustic emission signals. In addition, stress and strain and modulus of elasticity were also evaluated. In many cases, wood samples are subjected to pre or ongoing experimental settings, such as acclimatization at some temperature and relative humidity level in a climate chamber or simply moistening them in water. In more than half of these documents, the preconditioning is not well described because even when the acclimatization setup is specified, the time information is missing, causing a problem in the reproducibility of the experiments. The acoustic emission parameters are often related to the moisture content of the samples tested, as we can see in the plot on the left. An example from a work done by Rosner et al. in 2012 is reported. Here there is the acoustic emission count rate of signals lower than 175 kHz and of signals higher than 175 kHz, respectively indicated by field and open symbols, from fresh never dried indicated by letter A, once pre-dried indicated by letter B, and twice pre-dried indicated by letter C, subboot beams at different moisture content levels. As as a result, the acoustic emission count rate lower than 175 kHz of fresh never dried subwood beams appear to be much higher than that of once or twice pre-dried subwoods. Sometimes the acoustic emission parameters are also related to the relative humidity condition of the environment in which the tests take place. The plot showed on the right of this slide is reported as an example of this kind of investigation carried out by Bertolin et al. in 2020. Acoustic emission signals here have been recorded during two stages of an experimental procedure occurred in a climate chamber at two different relative humidity levels that are visible through the dashed gray line, um, 80 and 30 percent respectively. The acoustic emission activity was concentrated over the first days after the hygric change and successively as the sample equilibrated with the new environmental conditions into the chamber it decreased. Microscopic observations are not so widespread in the selected works, despite very being very useful to precisely perform a fracture surface analysis during the experiments of wood failure. Among the selected documents, only seven include microscopic observation of the surface by means of scanning photography technique, scanning electron microscopy, optical microscopy, stereo microscopy and electron microscopy. Most of the time, the theoretical approach aimed to perform numerical simulation by using finite element analysis, for example, to put in evidence a good correlation between acoustic emission results and numerical predictions, or to obtain some idea of the most probable source region of acoustic emission signals. In some cases, the theoretical approach proposes also mathematical formulations. Among the documents analyzed, many of them had the information on the grain aspect. Some examples are reported in this slide. Aguilera et al. identified changes in cutting conditions and surface quality of Scott's pine samples. It was assessed that the effect of changing the slope of grain was reflected by a significant variation in the acoustic emission signals. Chen et al. monitored the failure process of red lawan and sitka spruce specimens under static and phatic torsional loading with different grain rotations and found important differences in acoustic emission counts for hardwood and softwood. 
it was assessed that the test piece grain angle influences the total acoustic emission counts up to the fracture. As a result, acoustic emission counts decrease as the grain angle increases from 0 to 45 degrees and increases as the grain angle increases from 45 degrees to 90 degrees. On the right, the attempt of obtaining information about the influence of high-low density trailings in the variation of acoustic emission parameters produced a few information coming from few documents. In particular, Rosner et al. in their experiments found that spruce latewood emitted much more acoustic emission at a given volume because the tracked number was higher than in spruce early wood. And this was proved by the acoustic emission count rate that appeared to be generally higher in latewood. Perrin et al. highlighted in their work that wood species having a significant difference in the density values between late wood and early wood, for example, fear, are more likely subjected to stress concentration at the early wood late wood interfaces. When the differences between early wood and late wood density values are very small, for example in poplar, the damage mechanisms are quickly initiated but evolve progressively until the rupture, so numerous but not very energetic signals. Finally, our review has highlighted that there are four potential future research lines. We found that only one document dealt with acoustic emission in situ monitoring, so it would be interesting to explore more the in situ field of research, for example, monitoring the health of building construction materials. Future work should investigate the three rings density aspect in the tested samples, especially regarding pine wood, to obtain insights on the influence of this characteristic on the variation of acoustic emission parameters recorded by the sensors. The multi-technique approach used in these works proved to be lacking microscopic observation. For this reason, it could be useful to consider again the role of microscopy techniques in the fracture surface analysis during the experimental tests. Finally, the information related to the acclimatization characteristics of the tested samples should be improved, especially in terms of the duration of the conditioning period, an information that is often missing in the documents. In this way, the correct reproducibility of the experiments could be ensured. Thank you for your attention.